Hey, how's it going? It's your boy, Coach C. Today I'm going to show you how to do some basic static equilibrium problems. Now, I've got three examples that should pretty much cover all the types of static equilibrium problems. Now, remember, static means not moving, and equilibrium means when all your forces equal zero. So what this pretty much means is we have an object where all the forces, or a system where all the forces equal zero, but it's not moving. There's, no, there's another type called dynamic. That's when the system's moving, but we're not going to talk about that today. And today, we have this problem set up where we have a 100 newton weight, be suspended by two different ropes, and one of the ropes is at 70 degrees. So the question is, what is the tension in each one of these ropes? Well, in order to do this, we have to understand that um, we have to break these down into components. Now, if you notice here, T1 does have a T1x component, and it also has a T1y component. Now, what's interesting is this T1, I should put, or sorry, I should say T1x, this T1x component has to be equal to T2 because in the x direction, what this means when we're at equilibrium, this, the object can't be swinging side to side and it can't be moving up and down. So if we see here, T1x has to equal T2. And in the y direction, we'll see that T1y actually has to equal 100 because if you think about it there's really only one vertical component holding up this hundred newtons all right that's not the actual tension in that rope because it's at an angle but the vertical component of it has to be equal to 100 so t1y must equal 100 newtons okay now that we have that we can actually use some trig because we actually have a right triangle right here so I'm gonna pull this right triangle out this is not drawn the scale but this is T1, this is T1x, and this is T1y. Now we've already deducted some things that T1x is actually equal to T2, and T1y is actually equal to 100 newtons. So if we actually are looking for our tension in the one, and our T2, which is also a T1x, we can then use some trigonometry, so so Katoa. A lot of static equilibrium problems like to use trigonometry. So if you notice, if we know a value for our opposite side and we're looking for our hypotenuse, let's just start with T1. So this is my angle, my right triangle. I have the opposite and hypotenuse, so that's going to be sine. So sine of 70 is equal to the opposite over my hypotenuse, which is T1. So T1 will be 100 divided by sine of 70. Make sure your calculator is in degrees. So make sure your calculator is in degrees whenever you solve for this. Okay, so 100 divided by um, sine of 70, and that gives me approximately 106 newtons. So that's how much is in T1. Now if you want to solve for here, okay, if you want to solve for T2, so remember T1x is actually equal to T2, so we're solving for one, you're actually solving for both. Uh, I have my opposite and my adjacent, so opposite and adjacent is tangent. So tan of 70 is equal to the opposite side, so opposite of my angle over my adjacent, which is just, I'm going to put T2 right here. So solving for that, T2 is equal to 100 divided by tangent of 70. And that gives me approximately 36 newtons. So we now know that T1 is 106 newtons and T2, so this tension right here is 36 newtons pulling this way. All right, so that's one type of problem where you only have one vertical rope. The other type of problem that comes up a lot on AP or general physics tests is this. Um, whenever you have two ropes being supported at an angle, okay, and in this case these angles are going to be identical, and we have a vertical rope here. So example, the tension in three, so the tension right here is going to be very simple. It's just going to be 20 newtons. Okay, a lot of times they like to, they like to try to trick you on that. So yes, that's still 20 newtons. But the question is now, what's the tension on one and the tension on two? Ah, oh, interesting. Now in order for us to do this, we have to understand that there are components. There's a T2x, and there's a T1x. There's a T2y, and there's also a T1, Y. So these are, the, these are vertical components. Now, whenever we look about this, remember, all our forces have to equal zero. Um, in the x direction, T1x has to equal T2x. Okay? They have to equal. And in the y direction, 
T1y plus T2y uh, must equal 20 newtons. So they have to equal this weight being pulled down. All right. Now, a fun tip, fun fact. If we know that these two angles are identical, that means the vertical components will be the same. So in this case, T1y is equal to T2y. So really, we can actually just write this as uh, two tensions in the y direction equals 20 newtons. So I like to take away the, these because they're going to be really the same. Okay. So in this case, the tensions in the y direction will just be 10 newtons each. And that makes sense. So this has to support 10 newtons. And this side over here has to support 10 newtons. So 10 plus 10 will equal 20. Okay. But the question's asking, what is the tension at these angles right here? Okay. Well, if we know that these components are the same, so the vertical and horizontal components are the same, that means the tensions in the horse or the at, at angles, so T1 and T2, has to be the same as well. All right. So it doesn't matter which triangle you pull out. Someone pull out the one on the right. You can now pull out a triangle and use your trigonometry. So this is tensions in the y direction. This is T, I'm call it T2. And this angle is 15 degrees. All right. And so example, uh, if we want to solve for T2, and we know that TY, so our tensions in the y direction are 10 newtons, we can do SOKOTOA. So SOKOTOA. So we have the opposite side and we have our hypotenuse. So we're going to use sine again. So sine of 15 is equal to my opposite over my hypotenuse, which is T2. So T2 will be equal to 10 divided by sine of 15. So 10 divided by sine of 15, and that gives me right at uh, 39 newtons. So I should say approximately. And that's also what T1 will be as well, because we deducted that uh, T1 uh, has to equal T2. Okay. So that's it was actually this is an example um, whenever these two angles are the same. Okay. It's a very very typical problem you'll see in general physics and on the AP test. Um, the last and probably the hardest one, this is something you would potentially see on the AP Physics free response question, um, or in a very, very hard general physics final, wink, wink, kids, um, is whenever, what happens if you have two different angles, but the T1 and T2, okay, that's all I'm asking for in this case, so what happens if you have different angles? All right, a big mistake kids like to do is they like to do, okay, I want to do my components here. Say so I have T1x and T2x, and there's also a T2y and T1y. So they want to tackle it just like they did before. And they take 50 newtons and they divide it by 2 because they assume these would be the same, and that's actually incorrect. In this situation, T1 is not equal to T2. All right? So they are not equal. So these two tensions are not going to be equal because the angles are different. Imagine yourself, um, you know, doing a pull-up or something, and you take one arm and keep it where it is and take the other arm and move it way out there. You're going to feel two totally different forces in your, in your hands when you're trying to do a pull-up. So how we're going to tackle this is pretty much the same we've been doing. Um, the whole system is still in equilibrium. So even though things really aren't, even the components, for the most part, have to be the same, particularly. Okay, well, the x components do. So in the x direction, we know that T1x must equal T2x. Okay, and in the y direction, going over here, T1y plus T2y must equal all the weight pulling down. Well, in this case, it's just 50 newtons. All right. Now this is where some trig comes into play. Well, how are we going to solve for T1x? All right. Well, we don't really know um, T1, but we can actually use it as a variable. This will be the very similar thing we did when we were doing projectile motion. Um, you know, example, if you're trying to find the x component, you would use the cosine function. If you're trying to find the y function of this tension, you would use the sine. Well, that's no different. So T1x, example, T1x is actually just T1 cosine of theta 
and T2 will just be T2 cosine of theta as well. Okay, so it would be very similar to how we would solve for that because you would be solving for your adjacent and your hypotenuse, hence that's why we use the cosine function. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill these in. Cosine of 60 equals T2 cosine of 10. All right, and what I like to do is I like to solve for one of these. So I'm just gonna go ahead and solve for one. T1 is equal to T2 cosine of 10 divided by cosine of 60. Okay, and that's a very, very important thing. All right, now notice we still have two unknowns, so we really can't solve for anything. But over here, let's go ahead and do this. Let's do the same thing, except T1Y, example, we were looking for T1Y, it's the opposite in the hypotenuse. So that's actually gonna be sine. So T1 sine of 60 plus T2 sine of 10 equals 50 newtons, okay? So now, if you notice, we still have two unknowns over here, and we have two unknowns over here. But we actually solved for T1, and this is why this step's important. We are now going to take the X and Y and combine them together. So we're going to take all of our X's and all of our Y's and just smush them together in some type of physics, fusion, trigonometry, you know, problem of, of, of just greatness. So we're going to take this T1 right here, this very important function, not function, but value. We're gonna plug it in right there. Okay. So I'm plugging it right there. So this might get a little bit nasty, but it's be okay. So T2 cosine of 10 all over cosine of 60 will be multiplied by sine of 60 plus T2 sine of 10 equals 50. Okay. Now, what we do to this part is, I mean, now you got a lot of, uh, of cosine and sine stuff. So what I actually like to do is I actually just like to um, actually multiply this in your calculator. So I like to do cosine of 10 multiplied by cos, or sorry, by sine of 60. Forgive me, I almost messed up. And then I'm gonna divide that by the cosine of 60. Now, some people can teach it differently, but whenever you do this, you actually get a value that's 1.7 uh, T2. Okay, I like to do that. I'm gonna add this also to um, sine of 10. Now I can type sine of 10 in my calculator and get an actual value. And that's right around uh, 0 0.1, I'll call that 7 T2 equals 50. Now the reason I do this is it makes it a lot easier. If you wanna teach, teach your trig a lot more advanced, you may, you may do so. But I found out that my children really like the, uh, they get to this part of the, the, of the trig, and that's pretty much all I want them to know. And I just have them converted into decimals like such. So if you notice here, we have 1.7 T2 uh, plus 0.17 T2. We can actually combine these two terms. So 1.7 plus 0.17, uh, uh, forgive me, equals about 1.87 T2. Okay, and then we can just simply solve it. T2 would be equal to 50 divided by 1.87. And I get right at approximately 26.7 newtons, okay? So T2 is 26, approximately 26.7 newtons, and that's important. And now if I wanna know what T1 is, well, heck, I come back up here and I plug T2 in right there. And that's how I'll get that. So T1 be equal to 26.7 multiplied by cosine of 10 divided by cosine of 60. And that will actually give me, was that 26.7 times cosine of 10 divided by cosine of 60. That gives me right at approximately 52.6 newtons. Okay. And so example, we can see that these two tensions are definitely not equal, like we said before. So kind of interesting thing is um, the one that's the steeper usually has the more weight on it, but not always. Okay, so example, this is a, a more complex problem that you would see probably on the free response question or a very, very hard question on your uh, general physics test. And I hope these help. If you do, please consider subscribing for some more uh, spicy math and great physics content. Thank you. Have a great day.